Taylor Swift song, Look What You Made Me Do. And it's like, oh, old Taylor can't come to the phone right now because she's dead. I kind of like think that like, yeah, old Sonny's, it's as morbid as it sounds, like old Sonny's dead, like the old version of who I was no longer exists. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Growing Together podcast with me, Sunny Vasquez. And me, Cesar Santos. A podcast where we talk about everything under the sun related to growth and becoming the very best version of yourself. We are back with another episode. Yes, we are. Just... <laughs> How are you feeling today, Caesar? It's pretty good. It's Monday. It's President's Day. So by the time you're seeing this, it will be the same day we put it out. So. Maybe. It might be Tuesday. It really depends on how quickly Caesar can edit. <laughs> Testing his editing speed. speed. I was going to say speedness, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It was a long weekend, so definitely... Enjoyed it. We helped our friends move. That was fun. So, I mean, it was fun, but sad. Um, well, also not that fun because <laughs> moving is not that fun. I mean, I don't mind. It's um, fun. Lots of stuff to move. You know, gets a good workout in. But um, some friends we made in this complex, honestly, like it was like a year ago now, um, they moved into a different complex. Luckily, it's only like half a mile <laughs> down yeah. the road, so it's really not that far. Um, so we helped them move. And then honestly, I feel like the weekend just goes by so fast. We binged Severance. Oh, yeah, that was so cool. Such an amazing is, show. Yeah, it shows. Honestly, I feel like we slept on it for so long. Because I oh, feel yeah. like it's been out for a while. And sure. I had heard about it. Um, but we finally watched it. And I was so angry that there's not another season. There's only one season yeah. out right now. So I was like. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of watching like TV shows. Because when they are that good as like Severance was. Yeah. Uh, and then, then there's, there's, it's not just, another there's season. nothing. It's like. I'm literally going to have to wait. I have wait. nothing to look forward to uh, now. And they don't even have like a release date for the second season. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I was like, when we finished the last episode, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? This is bullshit. This is what people break TVs over. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people get mad about. But yeah, the show had me thinking of... The show and the book I'm reading, I'm reading... I read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm on A Court of Mist and Fury right now. So is that the second book? By the way, for those that are listening, they might not know what... It's a book. I know it's a book, I but just it's, said a, like, it's a series of, of how many books? I think it's five, maybe? It's either five, five or okay. six um, by Sarah J. Mass. And the second book, there's this concept of like... This girl, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the main character has gone through a lot. And there's this idea that she can't return to being the girl she was before she experienced all these things. I kind of wanted to dive into that today because it is, it's true for us too. Obviously, this is like a fantasy book, so like, and it's fiction, so like, it's just a story. But I think in many ways we could relate to like that feeling of we can look at past versions of ourselves. And realize, you know, either long to be that version again, but also understand that so many things have happened that prevent us from becoming that same person. Like you can become a similar version of yourself, but you're never going to be that same person. I don't know. There's probably lines in movies that go like, and they were never the same again. You know, the things that Mm. change you. Can you think of any of like moments in your life that like people like to say altered their brain chemistry, but like. Yeah, changed you as a person to where you're like, I'm never going to be the same again. It could be good or bad, too. It doesn't yeah. have to be like some horrible, awful thing. It could be a good thing, too. I, f- I feel like for me, it's going to be weird probably for you to hear this, but uh, when I <laughs> when I broke my arm as a kid, it's like the weirdest thing ever, but it made me realize that, like, obviously, I, I've never broken a, born, a bone before that, but I, you know, probably fell and scraped my knee or whatever the case was, but... I realized that there was consequences to like your actions. Like you, you're over here, like obviously jumping off a swing. In my case, I jumped off a swing, broke my arm. Like there was a hospital bill. There was like all these things that, as a kid, you really don't think about. And then yeah. as an adult, you're like, man, like that was that's not that wasn't cheap at all. And and putting your parents through all that and uh, seeing you hurt, especially like obviously like we're grown adults here now, and it makes you wonder when whenever we have kids, that same thing is like when they break their arm obviously when they see so just anticipating well, that I mean, their kids no, are gonna have a, broken arms it's a very arms. common thing that happens like kids break their arm or their leg it's a very like or they yeah or they break their hand it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be their arm it could just be their hand or it could their be wrist. any bone they could our kids are just gonna be breaking bones yeah, apparently. i mean it just made me it just made me realize that as a you know as an adult that 
there's consequences there and it made me realize like hey maybe i shouldn't do anything crazy like that anymore however i still did a bunch of i was gonna say that did not stop you right that was not the one like thing where you're like i'm never gonna do anything well like the physical crazy stuff like it was crazy though too (laughs) speaking of crazy but i get like that like mine's a little bit more i don't know traumatic but i used to be very okay driving in the car getting in the car Mm -hmm. with other people not really caring about who was driving how well i drove but once i got into an accident and like i realized it can happen to me it changed the way like i mean it changed i honestly altered my brain because i get so anxious in cars now and i get so anxious when people that i don't drive with often drive even people i do drive with often like when you drive i get really anxious because i'm so aware of what could happen and i think i wasn't aware of how much of a possibility like car accidents are mm. um until it happens to you and i think that's the thing is like a lot of times we think things can't happen to us so when something that we thought could never happen does it changes how we approach the world at least i think for most people it yeah. does I think for people who aren't socio or psychopaths, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the which I don't know which. Well, one I don't of those. think if it doesn't change you. I think some people are just like. There's also those people where things just don't face them. No matter what happens, it just doesn't face you. Oh yeah. So they, I think uh, the, yeah. that case is just like oh like anything could happen, and they'd be like, you know, it won't alter them mm-hmm. or their lives that much because they almost expect those things happen i feel like if you expect certain things to happen it doesn't phase you as much yeah like it's something that's predictable yeah which is why like i was saying i still did crazy things even after that like obviously like the physical like i learned don't jump off the swing or else it hurts obviously and you're gonna have to break your arm or whatever the case is or uh, i ended up finding like a um like a way in the, in the future obviously years later of of still like being on the extreme edge of like of, of pushing myself or like a, my boundary, you know, whether it was running or like automotive stuff that I would do. Um, and yeah, it's just like, I learned those things. I know we talked about it before, but um, I feel like that's like, at least like a, for those that are maybe listening, um, it's something they can relate to. Yeah. Like a good example of like your life was changed. Cause I think that's the other thing as a kid, there's so much that your, your world is, it sounds stupid, but your world is only what you know. So if you aren't exposed to certain things, you don't know that there's certain things out there. So I remember um, people who explained like culture shock to me of like growing up where somewhere somewhere where there wasn't a lot of like diversity. So when you go somewhere else, like there's culture shock of like, oh my gosh, what is this? Or like imagine when people come to America too, like the culture shock of how different it is here Mm -hmm. and all of that shapes you, you know, you can't, you almost can never like unsee certain things or forget like the certain experiences that you've had. Like I'll never forget being in an accident. I'll, you know, never forget certain things that have happened to me because one, I'm just, I've got great memory in that sense, but I've also, those are the, our experiences shape us into who we are so and for some it also helps us remember what not to do so like in your case you know that hey me doing this good possibility i get hurt because i've been hurt before yeah by doing this so yeah. it's a great teacher but i think we also leave like certain situations changed people because because we can never go back to like where our mind was before to not knowing that it's like I compare it to like, you know how I always say that there are shows and movies that I wish I could watch again for the first mm, yes, time because yep. you can never experience mm-hmm. a movie or book the same way you did the first time. Yep. So that's what I compare this to is like, I remember when I saw the movie Knives Out, such a good movie, but you can never watch that movie again. You could watch it again, but you know what happens, you know, mm. and like it's a it's also a kind of mystery. So there's no mystery the second time you're watching it because you already know, you, the, mystery. You already know yeah. the mystery. So it's yep. even more so for those films that have like t- huge twists at the end. It's not as engaging to watch the second time around because you already know there's a huge twist. Whereas the first time around, you're like, I could have never predicted this. I think the same thing with the book and talking about time. It's like when you read a book, it's like an amazing book that you can't put down. It almost feels like 
literally hours can go by. You can finish a whole book. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if like as a kid or a teenager you've ever read a book, or even <laughs> as a grown adult. I don't know you, if you no, read. No, I mean, no, you never obviously read a book. So, <laughs> we just talked about I mean, reading. Do you read, read. Sunny? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean. Do you know how? <laughs> Do you know how to read? <laughs> no, I mean, as in books, like, as of late, you know, uh, that you just didn't want to put down. Actually, the Corn of Thorn and Roses, I think, I believe that. A court. A court. A court. A court. As in, like, C O U O T, not like court. I always thought it was corn. That's what's funny. Oh, corn. You thought it was corn? Corn. A corn. A corn of thorn and roses. No, it's a corn. But, anyways, um, yeah, it talk, a reference to time, like if you just feel like time just goes away and you just can't put something down. Yeah. Um, I think the same with any experience, whether it's a movie, an event you've gone to, like a oh, yeah. like a show or a musical or a concert. Um, like it just, like you just, it just sticks with you, and you just like, oh man, like you reminisce and see, yeah, like so much nostalgia, like years later about that, you know, and it does like somewhat shape you um, as a kid, especially like music and stuff. So. Um, yeah 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 music yeah even like some of the concerts i think that when i think about the concerts i've gone to those have like changed my life too because i think you it makes you feel less alone when you for me when i go to a concert that there's people who relate to these lyrics like i relate to these lyrics you know Mm -hmm. but the reason i also thought of this topic too is because i mean i feel like i talk about this all the time but I feel that I've changed a lot in the past I want to say four or five years and when I look back at like the girl I was in college and the personality I had sometimes I had I want to be that person again because I was happy and like I had no knowledge of some of the things that um, would end up like hurting me or causing me pain and I used to really want to go back to being her. I was like, what do I got to do to be that version of myself again? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I want to go back to that version of myself, but there's just, there's really no going back to that because I can't change what I've experienced. I can't, I can't forget what's happened to me and all of that. So it's really kind of just about creating a new version of myself that I'm happy with. It's not about trying to go and almost feel like, I guess, live in the past of like, I can get back to being my past self. I almost relate it to, um, there's that scene in Taylor Swift's song, Look What You Made Me Do. And it's like, oh, old Taylor can't come to the phone right now because she's dead. And so I kind of like think that like, yeah, old Sonny's, it's as morbid as it sounds like old Sonny's dead, like the old version of who I was no longer exists. Similar to like how in Severance, you know, there's two, if you haven't watched it, I'm sorry. There's two versions, like they are, they exist as one person, obviously, but there's two versions. There's their work self, their any, and then there's their Audi, the person that like out, who they are outside of their work. And um, it's like that... Yeah, that version that I was, you know, the girl I was two, three years ago, she's she's gone. And it's not like, I think sometimes I feel like it's a bad thing because I feel like I really like that version <laughs> of me. But yeah, you just, you can't really go back. Have you ever felt like that though? Like looking back yeah. at the past, you're like, I wish, I wish I was the same as I was back then. Would you, would you say that it's somewhat nostalgic to think of those times? Maybe it's because you were happy or it made you feel a certain way which is why you you know or you're a i'm not to say oblivious to things going on in your life or other people's lives but it was a time where you before you let's say like you got hurt by someone or something or an event happened in your life because that's what it sounds like to me at least like i think it's like partially nostalgia i think also what we tend to do is to remember times as if they were better than what they actually were because i think of college right and I used to wake up, and I still do sometimes, missing going to class, you know, and missing how I felt in college of, like, I had, I felt like, knowing what I know now, that there were so many less worries in college, but I know when I was in college, I was worried about where I was, you know, Mm -hmm. I was worried about the future, I was worried about my classes, but looking back, I think, oh, that's so much easier, but that's because I know what's to come you know I'm living the future 
essentially mm-hmm. like so when i look back on when i was in college yeah it sounds easier now to go back and do it but it's not to say i didn't have any problems when i was in college but uh again it's what we have you only know what you know so when i'm in college everything did feel like difficult and like oh this is never going to get better and all these emotions i still had those because i perceived what i was doing was currently like the hardest it was going to get mm-hmm. you think i thought when I get out of college, it only gets better from here. And I say it doesn't get better, but my perception of what was hard is a lot different than now. So I can look back and be like, oh, I would go back to college because that was easier in comparison to what I'm doing now. Mm. So I think we also tell ourselves these things that we were happier then, or I think it's easier to look back and think that things were better than they actually were or to like forget certain parts that we maybe experience too yeah it's either that or my in my head in my mind at least from my perspective from like whenever i do think of the past it's uh it's like uh obviously nostalgic but also it it's usually in my mind it's like tied to like a moment of where i resolved something in my life so that like point before that you know um i think of all these events that led to that moment of resolve or this like change in mindset, I guess some yeah. would say, um, that made me realize like there's more for me other than just doing whatever I was doing before, like in, 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 my, in, my, in my life at the time. So for me, it's all the stuff that led to that moment that I remember and think about, but then it's like, oh wait, but I'm in a better place now. And then even, even nowadays, you know, it's been a year since we moved to, to Nashville over yeah over a year now and it's crazy to think about I'm talking about time um that all the moments that led to us moving here and then a year later we're here doing our thing you got an, you ended up getting another job after you got here yeah you, you ended up getting another job after you got here um and obviously i'm still moving up within the company and i've learned so much in the within the past year and so much that i want to apply to my own uh stuff that i make that it just it's like looking even back a year ago to where we were today is nostalgic in that way and also makes me you know remember the the good times that were then and to the what they are now it's the same way that i think at least my at least in my opinion the way the same way that i look at things nostalgically in the past like that were obviously important to me um but do i wish the question that you you draw you drew earlier is like do you do you wish or do I wish like you did you want to go back to that to those moments or just to like a past it doesn't have to be those moments but like to a past version of yourself you know like sometimes the way I think of it is sometimes I think to myself you know I have made it through like the quote is like I've made it through a hundred percent of my hardest days and I start to think well how did I do it back then like how did I get through it because it doesn't feel like I can get through it now. So I try to kind of figure out what did I do before to get myself out of a funk or to, you know, because apparently the past, my past self knew something to get me through to here. But when I'm living in this moment now, I look to try to find those memories and it feels blank that I, you can only remember, to me, I can only remember that there was bad and then I was okay again at some point, but I can't remember the process that it took to be, you know, okay again to how I got back up, what helped me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think sometimes it's more of like a, we, it's longing for a time where we weren't, I've almost like, I don't want to say ignorance, but when, like, just knowing, I, again, I, I kind of go back to, like, when you're a kid, your life is, like, so good when you don't know about all these, like, real problems. You know, like, you're so, they call it, I think that's why people tend to call it, like, the real world when you grow up, because when you're a kid, you're not you're living in a sheltered version of the real world. Like you don't have like all the responsibilities that an adult has. So sometimes I even long to go back to a time where I felt like the world wasn't on my shoulders. And I, that's usually like 
when you're a kid and you have less responsibilities, like sometimes I long like, oh man, high school was so easy because all I had to do was go to school and I had friends, I played sports and, you know, during high school, obviously I didn't feel that way, but looking back, I can realize how simple things are. So I think sometimes I, I long for how simple life was because right now it feels so complicated. As you, To me, as you get older, it feels more and more complicated because there's so many other things you have to worry about. You know, there's that meme of like, oh, sorry, I didn't invest in real estate. I was eight years old, you know, like, because everyone's like, oh, you should have brought property. It's like, sorry, I wasn't buying property. I was literally eight years old yeah. when like the market was good, you know? So, but yeah, I long for like the simplicity of like not having of not knowing how difficult, I guess, things get. Yeah, no, obviously, as, things, as you get older, things tend to get harder, but because of there's certain, like, for example, like, our next goal in life is obviously to a house. Find, find a house, right? Buy find a house, house buy a house. house. We can find all the houses. I don't know. It's about buying the house. Like, maybe at this rate, maybe it's even cheaper to buy a plot of land and build a house. Like, obviously, you still need to take a loan out for that. But anyways, yeah. um yeah, it's that's like the next thing, you know, and I think about that often all the time. Like, I'm totally, like if it was four or five years ago, yeah, it would be way easier, right? Um, but I feel like with anything in life that you really want and you really that you really want, like striving for, especially if it's like a marriage or relationship or something that you want in life, it's gonna get, it's gonna be hard to get that thing. I mean, if it was easy, then everyone would have, have a house at this point. But, but it's not even about that. It's like. See, I don't think I also like don't agree with that. It, people don't have houses not because it's hard, but because oh, like no. the, it's the literally there's the affordability. Economy. There's yeah, it's obviously not that. affordable for most yeah. people. Like for, for instance, we live in Nashville, which Tennessee technically as a whole, like if you're looking at the state as a whole, is one of the cheaper states to live in. In the city that we live in, there are some decently priced houses around us. But then like when we're driving like to Costco or something, we look at like some of the for sale signs a million dollars for a house. And I'm like, who is like moving here that's paying like a million dollars for a house? And me and Cesar, you know, like to play the game of how much would this mortgage payment look yeah, like? Yeah. Like how much would you have to put down? Yeah, yeah. And it's crazy because I think about like, oh, are we even like gonna make anywhere near that amount of money in like a lifetime to like be able to afford something like that? And not that we need a million dollar house. I don't think that's our goal at all. But um yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's affordability um, for yeah. that. It's not just about, like, working hard. Because you can work hard all day and still not have. No, enough. of course. And um, I feel like we should have a whole podcast about um, mortgages and renting. Because I remember back, way back when, like, when I was in when I was in high school, um, yeah, it was 2011 when I graduated. But, like, obviously, like, my freshman year was, like, 2000 and, yeah, 2008 was, like, you know, on the the end of the financial crisis uh, of, uh, you know, the last financial crisis, right? Um, and yeah, houses were like nothing at that point. There was uh, my neighbor's But also house. imagine all the people that got screwed. Because yeah, like, no, for instance, they I, yeah, yeah. because they bought a house three years ago. Like we, and that's the thing. It's the, like, they bought it at, at the peak at the time. a real estate podcast. Yeah, no, I mean, but I don't no, want to turn we, into that. No, but, yeah. but yeah. my parents, we moved to Florida when I was in in 2005 and we bought the house for way more than what it was worth. So when the housing market crashed, um, my dad had actually gotten like promoted and we were supposed to move to Texas from Florida to Texas. And we couldn't sell our house because it was now worth less than what we owed on it. It's underwater, as I used to call yeah. it, right? And I was Under like, yeah. that's... As I still call it, I used crazy. to call it. But yeah, no, it's, um, it's crazy because, yeah, I mean... This is, this is what we think about, like, we're talking about time and thinking of, like, things or, you know, whatever the case is. But I don't know what, I don't know if this is going to be weird coming out of me right now or not. But I mean, because I think we've talked about this before. But, like, if I was, if I was, like, by myself and had, like, obviously had the same job that I have now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I really wanted to get a house in the future. Um, knowing, like, oh, shoot, like, if I wanted to afford this place that we have by myself. Uh, it would obviously be too expensive. Um, I would be like almost, you know, with like the cost of food and fuel. And obviously, like, let's say I had a car that I paid, a, you know, a down payment on. Like I would be probably barely making it for the most part. You know, maybe a couple hundred dollars yeah. uh, saved up. But I, I, 
obviously like downsizing or whatever the case is. But I started thinking about like how people had friends, not friends, of neighbors who they they uh, worked in uh, in in not in real estate, but they worked in um, in Vegas and they were poker dealers and they decided, you know what, I want to get a house. In order for me to do that, I literally have to live in my car for a whole year. And they did that. He, he did that. He lived in his car for a whole year. Literally, uh, he got a gym membership. So he can go to the gym. Obviously, he kept, you know, he kept himself he sane and showered and all that. And he did that for a whole year. Saved uh, like $50,000 enough for a down payment and got himself his house. And obviously, that's that's commitment. That's insane to think about. I mean, obviously, not, not everyone needs to do that, not, nor should everyone have to do that. But... I often think about whether or not I would end up doing that nowadays. And I'm, I think about it sometimes like maybe if I really needed, uh, if I was by myself, yeah, obviously we're together. But um, I often think of like if that's what's needed to, it, obviously a house is a, something, obviously you have to have a roof over your head to live for the most part, right? Um, but I often think about that like if I go back in time and just like, I don't know, some people instead of doing that, they just go and live with their parents, you know, and save up all the money. Which is you like know. a smart move, honestly, yeah. nowadays, you know, people like shit on it, but it is a smart move. Um, no, I don't think it's a bad to, idea to go. To do it yeah, if you can save, that. like, then pocket, like, for instance, if we had, like, no rent, oh, yeah, we'd be we saving no 20, so much money. like, $2,000 yeah. a month at the end of, you know. Two times 12, 24,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that'd be crazy in to have, year. like, $24,000 yeah. in one year saved. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, that, that often, often, but yeah, yeah. But I think about that, too, um is but again like going back to like i long career time where these weren't like the yeah. conversations we had to have like oh man how are you gonna afford a house because like then adults will ask you too like i say adults as if i'm not an adult but like older adults be like when you're doing this or when you're doing this like you know obviously you know we're gonna be getting married eventually people ask when we're gonna get married i'm like well you know get having a wedding is expensive but i also would really like a wedding because i want all like the people that we love to be able to be there and to have a reason for everyone to get together and the next thing is like oh when you're gonna have kids i'm like i want to be able to have afford to like give my kids a good life and then the other thing is like when you're buying a house it's like well that's what we're working on because they're so so i was like i long for a time where (laughs) these weren't the conversations that were being had um again where like things were just simpler um or even just because i struggle so much with anxiety and depression i always look back to my past of trying to figure out when it started and like to go back before I had all this worry on my shoulders. Um, because I'm like, there, there was a version of me that never knew this, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So there was a version of me that would have never experienced anxiety or depression. And I just think that's interesting too, is like, yeah, just the versions of myself, even like the person I was when I met you is so different than who I am now, you know? I often sometimes think of, instead of like, you know, I was remember, trying to think of the time that you're, that you, uh, that's like nostalgic or whatever. I often think like, man, I just wish I had a camera that was like set up recording my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that just like you, you're basically like shooting a documentary of your, not your whole life. It could be like five years. Let's say you started shooting in 2019 or 2020 and you're just capturing the moments and you can make this like huge, really cool story of, you know, uh, whether it's like life changing for yourself or for maybe you're shooting a film or this documentary for other people to watch and enjoy. But to, for those to understand like, well, exactly, like exactly what we're talking about, especially when it comes to like our own life and, um, or decisions that we made or, or whatever the case is, um, because it's just interesting, you know, it's, I feel like everyone's obviously life is different. Everyone has a different upbringing, but for the most part, they can relate to something visual and a story versus just, uh, or obviously like writing it down, writing, making a book and writing it down, you know, like that's, yeah. the, that's the other option is obviously just writing a book about it and then turn that into, you know, a movie or something. But um, yeah, it's, yeah, I think that's probably one of the reasons why we write and, and, and do things and, I don't think that was anything related to what I just said, but okay. <laughs> okay but I'm just saying it's just I, I think of I think of the the uh sorry to go on a tangent here, but I mean I think of the art form of creating movies, a book, a show, whatever it is, as a way to explain to people 
these moments in time that you're talking about the n- nostalgia like feeling nostalgia. well it's not i'm not talking it's about not. nostalgia though I'm, well i mean i think that's why i asked you it's if you not think really it's, nostalgia it's, it's like because like nostalgia typically i think is associated with like good good times but i also think that oh, yeah. there's like past versions of herself that we've been forced to become you know i like to i don't like to think but i think for instance i'm a very like high strung anxious person who i feel like is constantly like with like my guard up and so i know those moments that like shaped me to be that way and so i think of like what who i was before these happened before that happened and before they shaped me into this version of myself you know even like when again like when i think about the person i was before i met you you know you can i think you can attest to like how much I've changed since we started dating to now because of like the experiences within like the last six years you know Mm -hmm. so like I'm not the same person and I think that's I honestly think too like trying to go off in a tangent but I think that's what makes relationships hard is you kind of sign up to be with someone who you feel you know but like with any person they're going to change and who they are might change. And, you know, I think when I think about a lot of the times where we've been at like a crossroads in our relationships is because like we try to make ourselves be these people that we're no longer, we no longer are. You know, like I can't ask you, I can't expect you to be the same person you were six years ago because you're evolving and you're changing and that's what we're supposed to do. You know, unless like obviously, you know, sometimes we don't change in the best ways either. Sometimes things like, you know, I think some things have made me a little bit more jaded and I wouldn't like to be like that. Um, but I think that's where a relationship gets stuck. It's like you expect to be that person you're with to be the same and you'll hear people like, oh, you changed. It's like we literally are supposed to. Like it's just inevitable to change, you know? And yeah, it's, uh, it's for the most part, you know, I think – there's a lot more good out there than there is bad. So I think for the most part, people do end up changing for the good. Um, some out of necessity to obviously be better, right? You know, I, I think for the most part, like changes in my life have been for the good. But other people that may or may not know me or think they know me may think that it's for like the bad because of, you know, fill in the blank, right? Whatever mm-hmm. it is. Obviously, I know we've talked about change before in a previous podcast. Um, but I think it's necessary in order for, and I think it's part of like going back and realizing like there's moments in your life again, they're not nostalgic, right? But they may be just like, oh, look, this is who I was before to where I'm at now. And I think it's a good thing to look at that, you know, to see. I think it's good, but I, like I'm saying, like what I'm trying to get across, sometimes you look back and you're like, I liked who I was before better, you know, or I want to be that person because I feel that that person or that version of myself was happier, healthier. You know, I look back, for instance, when I was in college, I was, like, really in shape. I was doing a lot of running. And I think sometimes I want to be that version because I appeared, like, I think, again, like, everything was all right and I was doing the right things. And nowadays, sometimes I struggle to get out of bed. I'm tired and, you know, so you wonder, you know, not just what changed, but like, how do I, again, how do I get back to that version of myself? I mean, I'm sure you wanted that too. I mean, you had like this phase of your life where like you ran like every day, mm-hmm. you know, and like, it's not something you do as much anymore. What's um, interesting is that, yeah, you, uh, you brought that up in the beginning of the podcast and I just completely forgot about it, oh, but now you just reminded me, but I feel like at least for, I, I I feel like it's the reason we do those things, you know, when it was, for example, like me running all the time, it was because um, I had a sense of purpose, not saying that I lost a sense of purpose, but I'm just saying that when you do that, in the case of running, um, I was doing it for, I was doing it for like, um, one of the one of the reasons, obviously, is yourself, right? Because you, I mean, it made me feel good and all these other things, right? Um but then once you lost that sense of purpose, in this case, in that case for me, it was injury. Um, I never kind of fully recovered from that. And then from there, it just kind of got lost after that. So that I, th- I think if you can, you can actually relate that to anything in your life. If like maybe there's, you had a purpose, you felt like you had a purpose for something. 
and then maybe you lost it mm. and once it was lost you just kind of stopped doing it you know and um it's like i think with anything too in life if you're something like your job if it's related to your job or your career it's like if you lose the purpose of wanting to do anything in your life when it comes to your career like let's say you went to school for you got an art degree i don't know you wanted to be an artist and then you realize like there's no money to be made if to making art uh, maybe there is maybe there isn't maybe you end up doing something else later down the line so you lose that sense of purpose you stop painting maybe you go into graphic design i don't know maybe you end up doing something completely different my brother had friends who went to school for engineering hated it and now they're doing something else completely different because they thought they loved it and they had a purpose for it at the beginning i don't think the reason that they thought they did it was because they thought they loved it i think that you do things especially when you're going to school you do things because you're told that this is where i mean the it could be that is. too and yeah. so then when you get there yeah you feel like you have no purpose because your purpose was tied to it could be, making yeah. money and they found maybe another avenue like, to what, make like, more money or make the same amount of money doing or just doing i think a yeah. lot of people i've experienced so many people because this happens a lot of people who enter the world of marketing who get into digital marketing because they decided on a career path i've met someone who was like did like biomed and like was set to like do all these things in the healthcare field and she's like this just isn't my passion like she had done all the work but she's like i can't do this because it didn't fulfill her in the way that she thought it would and I think that we all long for something that fulfills us beyond like money you know some people truly are just money motivated to where that's all they need to be happy um and they can really also separate them <laughs> again in the sense of like severance separate like work and life I have a friend who I love who told me honestly just find the job that you hate the least and it's not bad advice because some people's some people, I think a lot of the association is that people that don't like to work are lazy, but I don't think that's it. It's just that people have, I think even more so now, generations now have much more sense of like what really matters in life and the purpose they feel. And it's not tied to working and it's not tied to their career. What they want to have is the time with people to experience things and to go out and do things. So, you know, we all long for... um I think purpose in that sense. And I think that's something that I've struggled with recently is remembering what my purpose is. Like, what is this all for? Because I, I'm, again, I, I'm very guilty of doing things because that's what you're supposed to do. And it's not even that I don't love it. It's just that it all feels, I think for me, a lot of it comes from feeling like there's so much pressure to, you know, fulfill all these other aspects of my life. Obviously, I need a job to make money, to have a roof over my head, to pay my student loans, to do all those things. So I think when you have all of that weighing heavy on you, it makes it a little bit harder to... I don't know, feel purpose outside of like just knowing that you have to survive and you, you know, it's like I sometimes feel like I'm just surviving and not really thriving because I'm just worried about the surviving part. All I'm doing is like worried about making sure I can like stay alive, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's stressful. And that'll make you feel like there is no purpose. You know, I think there was, I don't know if it was a TikTok I saw or some article that someone wrote about Gen Z having no purpose in life. They're like, oh, Gen Z just doesn't have purpose in life. And I'm like, no, I think that's the opposite of what's happening. I think that they found purpose in other things. Like we're taught that you like go to work and it doesn't really, that you make your career your purpose, you know, but that's not a lot of people's purpose. And I think they know two things can exist at once. Like you can have a career, but that not be your sole life's work. I remember having a conversation with someone I worked at when I worked at Target. And she's like, if you go to other countries, you know, here in America, we'll ask people, what do you do? Like, oh, what do you do for work? It's probably like the last thing people ask you when you go to other countries, because it's not like so ingrained in like who they are. I think we, t I think in the United States, we tie so much of what we do to our work because mm -hmm. obviously it affects every aspect of our life. Like you can tell when someone has a good paying job by typically by the way they live, you know, mm -hmm. or like, yeah. So 
I don't know. Just interesting. I'm just, yeah. Purpose is just an interesting conversation, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I know that you brought that up because of, like, you know, when you were, we were doing things or I was doing things way back when. And I do think, however, on, to- on the topic of purpose, I do think there is a way, especially if you feel like that was a, that was, that was, that was something that was um, healthy for you or it was a certain lifestyle that you may or may have been living that made you happy. I think there is a way, a healthy way to go back to that if you feel that it's even necessary in the first, in the first um, place, obviously. Um, I do feel that there is, there, or there, there are actually um, like patterns that you can get yourself back in that will get yeah. you back to doing to being better right if that was something that you wanted to do again because way back when let's say you know whether it was you're running or maybe you're reading a lot of books or you were doing a lot of things creatively that you would that you feel like you really can't do now is because you feel like maybe you're stuck in a rut or whatever the case but is. i think the other thing but, is that there's now like as your life changes other things prevent you from doing those things so i think like sometimes you may look at like oh i did so much of this back then but it's like okay what was the context of like how you had time to do that you know yeah obviously there's so like you know there's people who you know sadly probably lose time to do some of the things that they love because they have like other priorities that need to take priority like so for instance like if you have kids your kids have to take priority and not say that's not a wonderful thing but look in the context of like our situation there's some things i don't do as much because simply like i just have different priorities that i have to take care of currently it's not to say i can't ever go back to like doing a certain thing but as of right now i feel like my situation doesn't allow it you Mm -hmm. know so i think it's also context of like you know can can you go back in the way that you want to i think the other thing is like sometimes you can again like go back in a sense to doing those things but it might be in a new way you know it might be different than it was before so not truly like a one-to-one comparison but you have to adjust things in your life I don't know it's just interesting to me I've been thinking a lot about it because again that book hopefully no one who's watching this um is has already finished it or isn't reading this or doesn't plan to read this but in the court of Mist and Fury essentially like in the previous book A Court of Thorns and Roses the main character had to make a lot of decisions and those decisions kind of now haunt her. It's not like regret, like she doesn't regret what she did, but they changed her and like there's this whole like, she kind of acknowledges that she can't go back. It's like she can't just turn a blind eye to the things that have happened or the the things she did to make the things the the way they are now. Mm -hmm. And so she's kind of living with this like darkness inside her because some of the things were very traumatic. Um... But I do think that the point is, like, it does, like, again, it's not about going back to where things were, but creating a better future for you. And I think sometimes that's the light at the end of the tunnel. It's hard to see. You know, it's hard to, we can't predict the future. We can only act in the moment. So we have to think to ourselves, like, what can I do now that that I know with the knowledge I currently have that'll make me feel better? Like, how do I just put the next step forward and sometimes it's really just having faith that things will get better you know a lot of people tell you oh they'll get better and you can't see an end in sight you're like no it's not going to get better you don't know that like you can't know that it's a battle honestly but that's what i've been thinking about recently any thoughts (laughs) you're just going yeah i mean okay i guess i would i would say if it's like a final thought here um is that if you do feel like you're going, you think a lot into, um, you know, I do feel like if you think a lot and you're looking back at, into your previous life, whether it's a year ago, not even a year ago, six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, and you feel like there was something healthy and good for you that you're doing before that you may want to be doing now, I think you should attempt to do that again if it's good for you obviously if it's like being healthy running exercising reading more um yeah i think that there's a lot of things that we should be doing that we may or may not be doing um that like we just again maybe there's some sense of purpose that was lost or there was no time that she had now but maybe now you have the time to do it now or is that just an excuse that's another thing too is i feel like sometimes we tend to make excuses for ourselves 
about the things that we may or may not need to do in life. Like, oh, I just don't have the time to do it. It's like I'm pretty. I think the other thing, know? though, you know, consider, you're considering like very like one side that the things like, again, like that we're talking only about good things, but like take it in sense of like severed. He decides to work on the severed floor so he can escape, escape from his feelings yeah. of like losing his his wife. And I think in the context of like this conversation, like going back to like, for instance, if you've suffered something, suffered a loss or just are dealing with a really like a hardship to say that you can go back to who you were before is just a lie because you're not, you're going to, you're going to be forever changed, you know? So like even getting back into a routine is hard for some people or some people then spend their life, you know, maybe doing something good because they want to raise awareness about like certain situation. They want to, you know, take it and make action. But for some other people, it's like, they're always going to be a different person because they've experienced such thing, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think that's something that more so what I wanted to place emphasis on too, is that there will be these things in our lives that like, I think aim to derail us, you know? And, um, you've got to kind of go within, like, yes, you're going to be forever changed, but that changed version of yourself can also be a, a better version of yourself. It's not about going back to like it never having happened. Obviously in some cases, I know we say, I wish that never happened, but the reality is that it is, it did can't change time. Obviously that would destroy the universe if we could go back in time, but Theoretically speaking, at least, right? Theoretically <laughs> yeah. speaking, yeah. But yeah, I think that... Um, I just think it's important to think about because I think we try to... A lot of times we try to think that... Or we do think that our... The past version of ourselves was like a better version of ourselves, or... Yeah, there's... But... Uh, I don't know. There's so many, so many thoughts I have for this. It's really just about, again, moving forward. I think... Sometimes we can feel stuck in time or, you know, trapped. Um, But you really just need to put, I think, the best foot forward. And it's not maybe less looking back. I think we tend to look back to um, less looking back, but more thinking about what could be. You know, not all the things that have happened, but what could be now? What Mm -hmm. can I do now? So that has been this episode of the growing together podcast we're so happy that you're here if you made it to the end of the video please if you're watching on youtube like subscribe if you're watching on any other streaming podcast platform please write a review give us five stars be super super great but other than that that has been growing together with me sunny vasquez and me Cesar santos we'll see you again next week see you guys later